Hello guys, uh, my name is Hugo, welcome to my channel. I'm Los Angeles based DP and on my channel I make reviews about filming techniques, uh, lighting techniques, uh, reviewing gear. And in today's video I teamed up with Armando to show ways how to get rolling shots. Rolling shots are usually called the shots of a car or any other vehicle on the move. I can't imagine a car commercial without those kind of shots. But besides car commercials, there are many other projects where a moving vehicle on the road gotta be captured. So the first setup is gonna be Black Arm with a DJI Ronin 2 equipped with the red weapon helium and the Cine Zoom Sanjay New Easy series. And the second setup is gonna be Tilda Alien car mount equipped with the Ronin S2 and the Red Komodo with the Rokinon Cine Glass. The third option is gonna be a drone, which is DJI Mavic 2 Pro mounted on the back of a motorcycle. And the fourth option is gonna be about recently released DJI Ronin 4D, which is quite an interesting solution. So stay tuned until the end. The first option is more an industry standard solution, where you can have a black arm with a DJI Ronin 2, where you can install a big camera setups with big lenses and lots of accessories. You don't have to compromise much about what camera you're gonna put on or what lens to put on. Payload on this thing is massive and you don't have to think twice about putting extra accessories if needed. More advanced way is only a Russian arm, but it's stepping on a ultra high budget territory and it's done by people dedicated to do only one thing. We're considering the options that can be done by ourselves. Second option is recently released car mount Tilta Alien. That also has a spring arm and damper like a black arm, but it, it is smaller. This Tilta Alien package is designed to be used specifically with the DJI Ronin S2. Black arm and the Tilta Alien have a lot in common. Same idea, just uh, less payload and the uh, narrower choices of what you can put on it. But these days cameras are getting smaller and smaller and uh, it's becoming less and less compromise on the quality, if there is any at this point. But nevertheless, you still have to be thoughtful about what lenses to put on and uh, what accessories to use and not to add much weight. And the third option is very much like uh, an experiment for us. First, I've heard about this idea from my friend who were experimenting with that and I said it's not gonna work. I didn't. I just didn't believe it's gonna work since drone doesn't have a suspension, um, but they showed us pretty usable footage and uh, we decided to give it a try as well since that is gonna be most affordable and the uh, easiest option to get professional looking rolling shots. And the last option is gonna be DJI Ronin 4D. It's a recently released camera which is probably the strangest camera on the market. It has a full frame sensor, it has a LiDAR focus system which is incredible and it has built-in wireless video which is also very handy when we do rolling shots. And the most important, it has probably the most advanced uh, stabilizing system, which is gonna help a lot when we do rolling shots like this. This camera has pretty much everything that is needed in the package. So it didn't require any extra accessories except the car mount itself. That's it. So let's get to it. Armando and I decided to split this review in half and I'm gonna talk about the first setup, which is Black Arm and Ronin 2 with the red weapon helium and the third setup which is DJI Mavic 2 Pro mounted on the back of our motorcycle. And Armando is gonna talk about the second setup which is uh, Tilt Alien car mount and uh, Ronin S2 with the red Komodo. And the last option which is DJI Ronin 4D. And to watch Armando's review you can just click on this link here or just to find a link in the description. First of all, I want to introduce our team without which this test would not be possible. So here with us, Mili, who is my AC on most of my projects I do and also a great camera operator and overall very good in tech and uh, camera gear. Sam is specializing on uh, filming cars only. He works at the Will Company and he has shot tons of videos showcasing exotic cars. So he's done lots of rolling shots. As well as Roman. Roman is specialized on shooting with black arm on his Jeep Wrangler and his Jeep is equipped with all the rigging to grip stuff that needed to be gripped. And also he has a very super cool electric bike Zero that he also converted to a bike for shooting action scenes with a black arm on it. Very cool setup. So follow these guys, they are awesome. So in order to get first setup working, we will need a set of speed rails that are mounted on the car. It also can be done with a heavy duty suction caps or like in our case, more safe way, 
screwed onto the frame of the car. This way we don't have to worry about that suction cups are getting loose. Then of course we will need a black arm and a DJI Ronin 2. The camera that we are using is Red Weapon 8K Helium with a Cine Zoom Ingenue. This is a great lens and widely used for those kind of setups because it's a clean lens with a very good flare resistance and it has very nice range. We will put on a follow focus, a motor for a zoom to be in control of uh, everything from the car. This way we can change focal length with, without actually changing lenses. Zoom lenses are very handy in those kind of shoots and it's a luxury uh, you can get only by using big setups. We installed a matte box to help uh, cut in flares and, uh, and defiltration and very often a circular polarizer needs to be used if you want to cut out reflections from a glass. And we also installed a Teradek wireless video and the monitors to view the picture we are filming. We are also using radios, comms uh, to be in touch and uh, coordinate. That's crucial and always recommended having some type of uh, radio so you can communicate with another car. Phone calls aren't reliable and uh, usually in places that are pretty for filming. Reception isn't good, like in our case we are filming in canyons and there is no reception at all. So here are the footage we got by using this rig. Let's take a look. Looks pretty good, right? My personal preference is that I don't really like shooting on the super wide angle lenses. To me, a sweet spot is uh, from 35mm until 60mm. Closer we go, cooler it looks, in my opinion, but it's harder to keep steady and it's harder to find places where you can actually shoot from a further distance, uh, like the second lane, like in the canyons. Usually in the canyons, there is only one lane. I also don't like to put camera too low. I just don't like the low perspective if, and if if the headlights on they usually cause big flare and uh, when it's a night shoot it's gonna be even worse. Again my sweet spot is gonna be a little bit over a wheel of a car you're shooting but there is always exceptions and uh, there are cases where wide angle and low angle would just work better. So you just need to see it for yourself. In conclusions about this setup, it's a big and solid setup that helps you reliably get rolling shots with the proper gear and proper shoots, preferably with the permits and etc. Because this rig will definitely turn heads and uh, attract a lot of attention. And uh, of course, it'll make your client happy just by looking at it. Cons. Time to set up. It'll take at least two hours to set up everything. It'll require at least three person, driver, focus puller and the camera operator. And it'll require a car where you can safely mount all the gear and uh, of course, it won't be a cheap setup. And if you need to save money, that's where the second setup comes in. Review of which, once again, you can watch at Armando's channel. So as for the third setup, we are using the DJI Mavic 2 Pro and uh, strapping it to a seat of a motorcycle. But it's not limited to a motorcycle only you can mount it on a car as well. And that's pretty much it. We just need a remote control and a phone and someone is gonna be in another car we're filming to operate the drone. So let's take a look at what we got with this setup.
So how was it? Uh, to be honest, I'm pretty surprised how stable it is. Of course, there are, were some hiccups, but really, without suspension, with the use of just built-in gimbal on a drone, we got really smooth shots. And what impresses me as well is that the quality from the drone isn't that far at all from the big competitors in our tests. And another thing that you can't do with any other setups is that because it's a bike, you can actually go in between cars and get shots that are not possible to capture with other rigs. And perspective of it is just impressive. I don't have a footage to show, but I had projects where we shot uh, with, a, with a motorcycle moving on the sidewalk and shooting a car on the side moving in parallel. And all the parking uh, meters, all the electric poles were going across the frame real quick, uh, making the shots look so dynamic, even though we didn't go fast. And overall with the bike, even when you don't have a second lane to shoot from on a road, you can still be close to the edge of the lane and still get really nice angle of your car or whatever you're shooting. So pros of this setup, of course time. It's so easy to set up, it's easy to rig, uh, doesn't attract too much attention if it attracts attention at all. Less crew, if you're shooting it from a car and not from a bike like we did, you can get away with only one person who can drive and adjust the camera angle on it. And uh, of course cost. This way is significantly cheaper than any other ways we showed you. Cons. Client's perspective. It just doesn't look professional, you know. It has a poor performance in low light, no choices of lenses and of course way less control over what you can do with a camera and a gimbal. That was our takeout on these three setups that are gonna be right for different scenarios and each of them has its own advantages and a place to be. Well, that's pretty much it. I hope this all was entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, comment below. That really helps this channel grow. Thank you for your time and uh, I'll see you in the next one.